This was the key to helping me go from my full-time job to full-time on YouTube. And in this episode of the Think Media Podcast, we're gonna be unpacking the five essential mindsets for YouTube success while you have a full-time job. Be realistic about your season of life. The second mindset is work within the year's rhythms. Identify that maybe sometimes you just might put your channel on pause, but then maybe during a slower season in your job or your life, you shoot extra videos and you get ahead on your channel and maybe even schedule upload those. Number three, and this is a big one. Here's the truth about YouTube videos. They can be as simple or as complex as you make them. When you're in the full-time job season trying to grow your YouTube channel, keep it simple. Embrace batch production. Now, this is a common tip that's talked about in a lot of videos, but I think I'm going to take it to a place that maybe you haven't heard of before. And the big idea here is that so I was able to go full-time as a content creator and build an online business while I was working a full-time job. And in this episode of the Think Media Podcast, I wanna talk about how I did it and some of the lessons I learned. We're gonna be unpacking the five essential mindsets for YouTube success while you have a full-time job. How to make videos that grow your channel on autopilot so your channel grows while you're working. And then we'll also cover some time-saving tricks when you have a tight schedule. So let's dive in. So let's dive into the five mindsets that helped me when I was building my YouTube channel and online business and working a full-time job. And number one is be realistic about the season of life you're in. How many hours do you need to put in at work right now to support your family or yourself? Do you have any kids or dependents? What are other responsibilities like school that you can't really change in regards to right now in terms of how many hours a week those things are gonna take. And how much time can you carve out to work on your side hustle? Getting clear on this and giving yourself grace in this area is important because all of our life circumstances are different. When you have kids and you're a parent, it's a whole different thing than when you are single with no kids or when you're just a couple with no kids, right? You can relate. You know, and when I think about back when I got serious about YouTube around 2010, I was waiting tables at a place called Red Robin, probably 10, 20 hours a week. And then with the rest of my work hours, I was shooting wedding videos and videos for small businesses to pay the bills. My wife was managing our checkbook and a lot of the administrative aspects of our life and our marriage. And we were trying to build up our side hustle, but she was also working multiple jobs and helping us pay the bills. Now, we didn't have kids, but it was tough. There was a lot to juggle. So we had to be realistic that maybe some weeks I didn't work on my YouTube channel. Other weeks I could work a little bit more on my YouTube channel. I think the important mindset here is giving yourself grace and then identifying the challenges, but also the opportunities in your schedule. And we'll talk about some practical tips in part two. The second mindset is work within the year's rhythms. So in every job, career, season of life, there's going to be rhythms. Like if you're a teacher, you're probably going to be maybe off during the summer unless you do summer classes. So you're going to have a little bit more time. When I was working full-time at a church as a director of communications, I knew that Easter is like the Super Bowl for church. So leading up to Easter, I didn't have a, little, a lot of extra time based on my responsibilities. Also around the holidays, there was a lot going on. Now for me doing tech reviews and affiliate marketing and my main Think Media channel, I still carved out a lot of time around the holidays because I realized how strategic that was for my channel. But nevertheless, you gotta be realistic about the rhythms of the year. But here's the opportunity. Identify that maybe sometimes you just might put your channel on pause. I know there's a pressure to post once a week or be consistent, and that's great if you could do it. But then maybe during a slower season in your job or your life, you shoot extra videos and you get ahead on your channel and maybe even schedule upload those because you're doing something like batch producing. Number three, and this is a big one, prepare for the necessary trade-offs. So I feel like some of the things I'm about to say could be put on like a motivational poster that's inside of a CrossFit gym. But the truth is, these things are true. Success demands dedication. No pain, no gain. There's a reality to the hustle. Dreams don't work unless you do. The dream is free, but the hustle is sold separately. The truth is, there is no success without sacrifice, and there's gonna be necessary trade-offs. It's an important mindset. 
And so I know for me, I gave up a lot of leisure. I also was deeply passionate about my YouTube channel and deeply focused on my future dreams. So that meant that I was turning down invitations to go out on Friday night or Saturday with friends. It means that I was working on my dreams and goals when I could have been maybe resting and relaxing a little bit more. So my question for you is, what are you willing to sacrifice? What are you willing to give up for your goals? Everything worthwhile in life is uphill. And the law of sacrifice says you got to give up to go up. And so hopefully you sacrifice things like leisure or entertainment or maybe maybe some social life for a season and different things like that. And hopefully you avoid sacrificing the things that matter most like your health and like your core family, like your spouse and the your children, like these very important things. I'm not saying sacrifice those, but you know, if I get a little bit real with you, when I think back to uploading my first Think Media video 14 years ago, I knew there was gonna be trade-offs, but I'll admit I pushed things to the extreme. My health paid a price. My wife paid a price. And I think that's a tension to be managed in the sense of, any entrepreneur couple is going to know that there's going to be a price to pay and there's going to be sacrifice. I think where I could have done better is probably in communication, maybe how fast we were going, maybe pacing ourselves a little bit more, and especially on the health side of things. It was so much pressure to work after hours when I had lower energy and I'd already worked so hard at my day job to also work on my side hustle yeah, what it meant I wasn't in the gym or working out or necessarily taking care of my health like I should. Now, I will admit, I was convinced of this truth that if you will sacrifice for a few years, like most people are not willing to, you can benefit for the following decades and even generations, like most people won't be able to. You will receive benefits of planting seeds of sacrifice. So, thank God that. Now, at 40 years old, I'm actually finding a ton of momentum in my health that our marriage has been through ups and downs and lots of rough patches and marriage counseling and therapy that may have happened anyways, despite of work and YouTube, of course, of all other issues. And you can't even imagine being married to me. What a nightmare, right? You know, And so different challenges that you might have as a couple. So I think the two big takeaways are success is going to require sacrifice and necessary trade-offs, but be wise. Be cautious and pace yourself and learn from some of my mistakes. Number four is choose a topic that ignites your after work fire. So I think this is so key. When you want to have the grit and energy and resilience to build a side hustle after you get off work, when you're fatigued and when energy is low, it is so helpful to have chosen a topic that you would love spending time researching, studying, preparing for, investing in, reading about, watching videos about more than you would want to watch Netflix. So when I say I sacrificed leisure, in one way, it wasn't even a sacrifice. I didn't want to just go out and just drink beers and play darts with the homies. I didn't want to do other things that maybe would have been appealing to others. It's about self-awareness. I love YouTube and marketing and online business and studying it and tech and cameras. And so I had really built a YouTube channel around my passion. So if you already love spending time on this, learning about it, discussing it, that's going to be incredibly helpful, I think, for succeeding on YouTube as a side hustle. So as a reminder, in part two, we're going to be talking about time-saving tricks for YouTube success on a tight schedule. But let's hit number five, which is keep your eye on the prize and visualize your success. Building a successful YouTube channel takes patience. It takes time. So you want to stay focused on the long game. I'm reminded of actually a Bible verse that says, do not grow weary in doing good for at the proper time, you will reap a harvest if you don't give up. There's something about being patient. There's something about planting seeds and knowing that the mindset of a farmer is that you're gonna plant seeds today and you're gonna water tomorrow and the next day and the next day to maybe not see growth for weeks or even months. And then eventually you just see that baby leaf pop up, that baby seed spring a little bit and not even be fully mature yet. That's when you get that first one out of 10 video or that first 1,000 viewed video or you get that first 
dollar you earn or your channel gets monetized, you're like, hooray, I'm monetized. I'm making like $7 a month, you know? Like it's it's small, but the mindset here is keep your eye on the prize. When I was building YouTube on the side and trying to stay motivated after my day job, I had to keep the marathon mindset. I had to be committed to small wins and committed to getting to the finish line. So we've been talking about mindset, but now let's get into some super practical time-saving tips when you have a tight schedule. Number one, focus on ranking videos and search-based content. This was the key to helping me go from my full-time job to full-time on YouTube. So what's a ranked video? A ranked video is a video that you post on YouTube and either it continues to get found in YouTube search, someone's typing a search query in YouTube or they're typing a search query in Google and they find your content, or it continues to be suggested by the YouTube algorithm for weeks, months, and even years to come. When I discovered that YouTube is the second largest search engine in the world, and I realized, wow, I could work on a side hustle after hours, and I could post a video that might take me two or four or 10 or 20 hours extra in a week, but if I do that video in a way that it ranks in search and keeps getting views while I'm at work, that one insight, that one big idea changed everything for me. Because what I actually realized was ranked YouTube videos are like an employee that you pay once, but they work for you for free for weeks, months, and years to come, maybe decades. And now I have 10-year-old videos, videos that I posted while I was waiting tables at Red Robin, videos that I posted while I was working as a director of communications at a church that still get me views today. The seeds I planted yesterday are actually the harvest that me and now the Think Media team and our video editors and our other teams still eat off to this day. This is a huge concept. And honestly, for as much as we talk about it, it's still pretty underrated. I think because it takes patience. I think because people realize that there's many more viral strategies on YouTube for having rapid growth and growing big, but we see a lot of viral today sensations that don't have any sustainability tomorrow. And so I want to encourage you, this topic of ranking videos is a huge key of working your way towards full time, building up the MRR, the monthly reoccurring revenue brick by brick and piece by piece to carve out that financial freedom for going all in on your side hustle and making it your main hustle. Now, I want to go through the rest of the time-saving tricks. So if you want more on that, we actually have a free five-day challenge coming up soon. If you want to register, you can go to tube1kchallenge.com or click the link in the show notes. Every single day, we're going to learn something and then have something to do. That's why it's a challenge. There's daily challenges. It's five days. It's during the week. There will be limited replays, so you can... Um, watch it after work or before work of maybe the live session that you missed. There's also going to be giveaways. And so for more on ranked videos and the different strategies that we've been doing right now for getting views and growing in this current YouTube environment, as well as some of the changes that have been happening on YouTube, I think you're going to love the free five-day YouTube challenge that we're hosting. And that's at tube1kchallenge.com where you can register for free. Number two is consider outsourcing. Could you outsource thumbnail design? Could you outsource video editing? Or could you outsource something in your personal life like house cleaning or landscaping, ultimately buying back your time to work on your side hustle? And outsourcing is more accessible than you may think. For example, you could go to onlinejobs.ph and find incredible freelance video editors in the Philippines that can actually make an incredible wage based on the dollars you might pay here in the U.S., but also can be incredibly affordable, like a month's worth work of full-time work from anywhere from $300 to $600 a month. Now, this might not be the financial season for you to invest into something like that, but many people listening to this episode right now actually have those dollars or could find those dollars by maybe pulling them from something else that is just a liability, entertainment, something you don't ultimately need. And again, the law of sacrifice is you got to give up to go up. So what if you save a little money and invest it in your side hustle and your YouTube business today so that you create enough margin, you could buy whatever you want tomorrow. You know, if you want to shop without looking at the price, work without looking at the clock. And if you want to be even smarter, 
delegate and outsource some things, and perhaps delegating the technical aspects of YouTube, you want to do those yourself. Well, if you hire a house cleaner and you normally would do that, you may have just bought back three hours. And during those three hours, you could research, shoot, record, and possibly edit and upload a video if you kept it simple. So consider outsourcing. Number three is simplify your content. Here's the truth about YouTube videos. They can be as simple or as complex as you make them. They could be a simple talking head video with no edits, or there could be tons of editing with B-roll and sound effects and extra clips. They could be a travel video that takes you across state lines with drone footage and GoPro footage and lots of different dynamic shots all woven together. They could be highly complex, multi-angle shoots. There's such a wide variety of how complex the videos you're making are, but here's what I wanna challenge you, is that when you're in the full-time job season trying to grow your YouTube channel, keep it simple. Complexity is the enemy of execution. So when you're journaling and you write down 10 or 20 or 30 ideas, after you've got your video ideas, ask yourself the next, this next question. Which of these video ideas have the potential to get the most amount of views, like maybe the most broad appeal topic that's still on brand for you? But then also, which of these would be easiest and most practical for me to create? You might be like, if I climb to the top of Mount Everest and then declare some motivational statements, that would be a great video. It might go viral. Sure, but you'd have to climb to the top of Mount Everest. Conversely, if I do a talking head video about different destinations people could travel to and I use other footage, maybe that's fair use or that's stock footage, I don't even have to leave the house and I could get a video done. There's such a wide range of video production complexity. When you're in the side hustle season, keep it simple. Number four, embrace batch production. Now, this is a common tip that's talked about in a lot of videos, but I think I'm going to take it to a place that maybe you haven't heard of before. And the big idea here is that if you want to get ahead on your YouTube channel in the side hustle season, consider blocking out a Saturday morning and shooting four videos all in one batch and not just one video at a time. In doing so, not only are you now four videos ahead, but you also have maybe compounded the setup of your lighting and your camera, the pre-prep that went into that shoot, the mindset and the energy and focus of, of not task switching all the time, but just being focused on filming some videos, and then setting aside some time to maybe edit all of those videos on the next Saturday morning, and then setting aside some time to do thumbnail design for all those videos. So you're grouping similar tasks, but batching could apply to almost any area of your life, maybe household chores and household duties. You have a conversation with your partner and say, listen, we need to get to a whole other level of discipline, organization, and calendar management because I need to carve out some time to build this side hustle. Like we're going for this thing. We're going to make this thing work. I, I, I want to go full-time on YouTube because it's going to give our family a whole different future. So we're going to be that much more disciplined by grouping similar tasks, by making decisions that maybe I'm going to pay to have my groceries delivered. Did you know that that can save you massive time and it's not really a big cost and Instacart or different delivery services just saved you from going to the grocery store. You're making more lists. You're creating more automation. The whole idea of batch producing and organization and systems can absolutely save your life during the side hustle season. Tip number five is utilize aggressive calendar blocking. Now, what's a calendar block? Well, it presupposes a few things. Number one, that you actually have a calendar or a planner or somewhere where you look ahead and schedule what you're doing. If you don't have that, let me encourage you, that is gonna be a massive momentum builder for getting ahead and getting more organized. I like to use Google Calendar. It can be integrated with any phone or smartwatch, Android or iPhone. And once you start plugging in your tasks and your responsibilities, oh, we've got that birthday party for our friend's daughter. Oh, I've got work this day, I've got this that day. You start looking at your calendar and seeing the possibilities. But calendar blocking is then putting blocks on the calendar where those become sacred. What gets scheduled gets done. So you put a block on the calendar. Okay, Friday afternoon, I am going to research videos during that time. Okay, on Monday morning, I'm going to get up early. And from 5 to 7 a.m. before I head out to work, I am going to design up thumbnails and finish those video edits and upload schedule upload the videos. 
So aggressive calendar blocking is huge. And even being thoughtful about what could I remove from my calendar? How could I talk to any other people I'm connected to, my partner, my spouse, and think about where, how could we modify our calendar or have my mother-in-law watch the kids here so I could shoot this day and you do that. And being aggressive with your schedule to find any time you can to carve some momentum out while you're working full time. And then number six might just be the most important and that is enjoy the journey. Recognize that right now when you are trying to build a YouTube channel while working a full-time job, you're probably in the hardest season because you're pulled between competing interests. You wanna be 100% at your job and you wanna be 100% for your family and you wanna be 100% on your side hustle to build the future that you want, but you only have so many hours in a day. So I think the mindset here is you gotta give yourself grace and refuse the guilt. If you didn't hear part one in this series, check it out in our library of podcasts or videos where I really go into some really resolutions that content creators need to make and really the different struggles of the side hustle season. I think that'll be therapy for your soul. But the big idea here is that have joy on the journey. Embrace the suck. Embrace the challenge. Embrace the pain. Embrace the ups and the highs and the lows. Embrace the one out of tens and embrace the 10 out of tens. Like it's really also not about the destination. And you probably have heard a lot of people that reach the quote unquote pinnacle of success. Of course, they might say, ah, the silver play button wasn't everything I thought it was cracked up to be. And you're like, easy for you to say, but it's kind of true. Sometimes you hit a target in your goals and maybe you can relate to this where you're like, man, you know, I thought it would feel different. Well, let me encourage you this, have joy now, have happiness now. Enjoy the journey now. Celebrate the, the every season. Celebrate the pain and the struggle and the late night edits. Celebrate the extra coffee and the different sacrifice season that you're going through, the lessons that you're learning, the price that you're paying, and the joy of the journey. And a couple things as we land the plane, if you want more help on your YouTube journey, I want to invite you to our tube1kchallenge.com. Our free five-day YouTube challenge is coming up soon. If you enjoyed this episode, I think you're going to love that event as well as all the different tech and software giveaways we're doing. It's going to be a lot of fun. If you got value, maybe consider sharing this episode with somebody and then liking, rating, reviewing the podcast wherever you listen. And I can't wait to connect with you in a future episode. There is a part one. So if you love this episode, check out part one in the show notes. That's really about if you feel like quitting or you feel overwhelmed or you feel tired, then uh, definitely check out that episode next. And I cannot wait to see you in a future episode. My name is Sean Cannell, your guide to building a profitable YouTube channel. Until then, keep crushing it, keep smashing it, and we will talk soon.